That serves you right, f***ing Muscat, that. Huh? Serves you right for Muscat, that. Huh? I want to beat Plymouth so f***ing much, lads. Honestly. Please, you're on bench. I'm going to put you on bench. Sorry, son. Danny, go and get it back, son. Go and have to wait for it. You make me feel sick if I look at you. And do not shirk a f***ing tackle. Everybody! You've got to f***ing die to get three points! Hello everyone and welcome to the official Sheffield United podcast that we like to call one of our own. And no one fits that bill more perfectly than today's guest. After nearly eight years of service at Bramall Lane, he led the club to two cup semi-finals and promotion to the Premier League. He's a record-breaking manager, 1,603 games and eight promotions. And he coined that famous phrase, you've got to f***ing die for three points. It's none other than Neil Warnock. Welcome along, good to see you. I only swear on the bench. <laughs> I know you're not as sweary as you <laughs> used to be. <laughs> yeah. When you come back here, what kind of emotions does it evoke for you? Well, it's, it's strange because I've only been back as a manager, really. So I've only seen the dressing room and, and you know, getting off the bus, etc. So today's the first time I've been back in the office and seen you know, people like Sue, the receptionist who was here when I was here, and uh, one or two other people. So it's always nice. It's a, it's nice because I think we end, we helped to build the club as it is. Mm. You know, the corners of the ground weren't in when we came. The, the back behind the goal wasn't like it was. You know, we hadn't got a training ground. So, you know, I had a bucket in my, in my changing room to catch the water coming through the roof when I came here. So it, it's, it's really satisfaction to me to look at the club as it is now. And was it important for you to leave a legacy behind? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, we could have spent a lot of money we, we had a choice at one stage of, of uh, spending it on players or building the training ground. And I, I said, let's build the training ground. I'll make do with the, you know, what we have. Uh, and that's what we did. And um, I think it's, you know, it's paid dividends, really, the training ground. Let's go back to the start then. Why, why Sheffield United? Why did this become the club that you supported? Well, only because I was, a, as a boy, with me, my dad, he worked for English Steels. And um, as a crane driver, he worked shifts. He always wanted to go to a match, you know, whether it was Wednesday or United, etc. And it just happened to be that uh, the, the weekends, my sister was a Wednesdayite at the time, so I, I didn't want to be like my sister and brother. I wanted to be on my own. So I, and I also, they were the underdogs then. Yeah. So I, I liked being the underdog. So I said, no, I want red and white. So my dad used to come home uh, to Freshville. Um, he used to get home about quarter past two. We used to run down to intake, get the bus to Granville Road, run up the road to gra up to the turnstiles, um, get through the gate and uh, up the hill, which seemed like the Ever Everest, Mount Everest, yeah. climbing up the back of the cop to get to the top. I sometimes sneaked under the turnstiles so I didn't pay. <laughs> uh, and then when we got to the cop, it was one of those jobs. My dad used to just kicking off there when we got there, and he tap the guys at the back and say, boy, come in and pass me to the lads and, and they'd pass me. And he said, I'll see you at the front at the end of the game, don't move. And then he used to pass you down, you know. It was a fabulous for me, uh, Sheffield United. It was just um, everything that I wanted, excitement everywhere. Yeah. Who were your heroes then? Joe Shaw was my, my main man. He was a centre half, five foot five, I think he was, something like that. But he just played football and he was, you never got the better of Joe Shaw. He was. He was marvellous, you know, Jerry Summers alongside him. Uh, you had people like, um, I, I, my favourite actually, as daft as it sounds, I love Joe Shaw, but a lad called Brian Richardson was like a, a, a wing half then. Right. And nobody, you know, he would never ever got any mentions. He was the toughest man I've ever seen. He used to kick hell out of opponents and I loved it, mate. He never shirked a tackle or a header and he might have been limited, but you know, he, he gave everything and uh, Doc Pace, he used to score 10, 15 goals and five would be with his hand. Every year he'd put five in diving and it would fist them in and they never had VAR in them days. <laughs> so, um, you know, and Ronnie Simpson was a bald headed left winger. It was really quick and hell of a shot. Had the hardest shot I've ever seen in football. Um, and the occasion where he did head it, everybody in the ground would cheer because he never headed a ball ever because I don't know whether he was bald headed or whatever it was, but. Uh, he, he was, a, you know, he was a hell of a shot, scored some great goals with that left foot. Is the one game that you remember watching as a, as a kid, as a youngster, that really stands out for you? Um, well, only, only away from home, not here. Okay. It was my dad, they used to chip in so much each week at British Steel, or English Steel, should I say. And for, they used to have a weekend away in London. Right. And uh, used to get me on the coach, we went down, Imperial Hotel we stayed, i never forget the name. <laughs> 
and I used to sneak, you know, my dad used to sneak me in again in his room. And uh, we went to Highbury. Wow. And uh, it was, oh, it was an amazing there. Uh, I remember looking at the clock and it was absolutely enormous. I was a little boy and looking across the massive clock there. And then, you know, they, all the Arsenal fans and the Sheffield United fans, it was, the atmosphere was unbelievable. And uh, where we lived at Freshville, there were always, uh, some teams used to come past. I remember running up the road when my mates come down and said, all oh, the Norwich fans, they're all coming through on buses and that. Let's get up there and give them some stick, you know. And uh, Norwich were lower down, I think, not normally, but well, they were really low when we played them in the cup. And, uh, but all the green and yellow scarves and we were giving them all stick on, the, on Burley Moor Road there at the top. <laughs> and it was, uh, you know, it was, we had some good time supporting them. I mean, obviously, the, the Harbury story is a great one, being in awe of the clock and all of that. So there must have been a point when you come to manage on that touchline yourself, where you mm. looked at the same clock and thought, wow, this takes me back. That must have been quite an emotional... A bit unreal. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, but a pinch it, me I, moment. I think it's one of those things where you, know, you, you always tend to go back like I have done since when I came here, about your mum and dad, really. You mm. go back to thinking about your memories of how it happened, etc. But I know, I mean, mum would always, uh, she'd be, and my dad would be proud of me now, you know, for, for what I did when I was here. But uh, you, you, you just get on with it then, you know, you, by that time when you, you're, you're a, you know, quite established when mm. you do that. It was, uh, the, wor the best time for me, Paul, was when I got the job here with Derek. That was the, that was the best time of feeling, because it was like, wow, you know. And uh, I remember driving into the car park and parking at the back um, that night and uh, just staying there for about an hour just looking at Sheffield United Football Club up on the, on the wall and thinking about my mum and dad bloody my dad would never have believed this my, my mum would she always said you'll be all right you you'll do something really exciting I've got every faith in you because mum had multiple sclerosis she was always in a wheelchair when mm. I was a kid um, but she would, she would have been right proud of me and uh, you know Derek it was it was quite emotional that you know that week when I took over And was it a complete surprise to you when you got the phone call or had there been a few noises? No, no, I'd, had, uh, I'd spoke to Kevin, uh, Kevin McKay, but we had known you know many years yeah. um, Scarborough wise and all that lot and um, he, he rang me and said to me um, uh, You know are you up for an interview? You know and I said when are you talking you know he said well as soon as you can so yeah, you know, I said, I'd, yeah, I'd love to. And I, I came down and I saw Derek, um, a couple of directors, and um, just had an interview sort of thing. Are you with me? I think I were telling them what I were going to do. <laughs> I was that full of myself. I was going to tell them about all the squad and what I'd do. And, I, and they were struggling at the time. They, were, they weren't very high in the league. Mm. And um, I was in a, a Chinese restaurant, well, not a takeaway in, in Ramsbottom, when uh, Derek phoned me after the interview and he said, uh, have you got a minute? I said, oh, Derek, I'm in a, I'm in a rest, uh, t takeaway. Can I, can, can I give you a ring in five minutes? He said, yeah, of course you can. Of course, I, 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 I drove home like a madman. You took the takeaway? I took the takeaway, oh, yeah, it was God. already being delivered, it. yeah. So <laughs> I, I, run, I drove home and I said to Sharon, Sharon, I've got to, got to ring Derek now. Cross your fingers, everything. I've got gooses now thinking about it. And um, I rang him and he said, well, son, you've got your dream. And that was it, I mean, wow. It was an amazing. Um, it was an amazing phone call. He's an amazing man. I love Derek Dooley. Wow, what can you say about Derek Dooley? He was a, a manager's dream. Always supported you. I'd like to think he enjoyed the years I was here as well because we had some fun. And I think you've got to do that in, in, in life and football in particular when you get a chance because there's enough bad times in the game. Yeah. So uh, I was very privileged to 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 and uh, I think it was Bernard Proctor was the other director who. Uh, who I spoke to at, at, at that time. And then it went from there, really. I, I took over more or less straight away, and, um, and then it was about making sure that the club stayed in the league, uh, and then going a bit, little bit, for, you know, then building the yeah. club. You're right, it was low. I was here for the Port Vale game, Adrian Heath's last game. Well, yeah. there was only 8,000 yeah, summer. correct, correct. Yeah. So it really was low. Yeah. What do you remember about your first game, though? Um, I was I'd, here for that, I remember it. Go on, you tell me who it was. It was Portsmouth, wasn't it? It was Portsmouth, yeah. Paul and Devlin? Paul Devlin, yeah. At this end, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it, was one of them, it was one of them things, you know, when people ask me, I think, I think, well, I had seven, whatever it was, seven and a bit years. Um, but the, before I took over, the crowd was 8,000 summer against Port Vale. Yeah. And, and when I left, the average was about 25. Mm. 
So I, I feel that, you know, we built that club and the, and the ground and everything else and, and established it really. Because um, Derek said, what, you know, what you want to do? I said, I want to make Sheffield United the best club in Sheffield first. Yeah. Then I want to get them to the top flight and I want to actually go to Wembley. That's what I said. I want, as a manager, I want to go to Wembley. So um, the, the first game, it was a matter of just getting the lads together. They, they were obviously lacking confidence. But when I come into a club, I, I don't worry about that. I just get them all on straight away. Um, we had a, a five aside, all put the pads on so there were no shirking and no <laughs> in the usual thing. I demanded that they give 100%, never shirk the tackle, never shirk the header. Uh, and I said, the crowd will do the rest for you. They'll be behind me, they'll be behind you, as long as you put your shift in. If you don't put your shift in, they'll let you know. And, uh, and we had a good response against Portsmouth. I think if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure, but I think Brownie might have been playing for Portsmouth. Yes, because at, didn't at the you time make a he move was on loan. On the back of that performance, I did. I, I liked Brownie that day. He was on. He was playing wide, and I've never seen him play yeah. wide. But then they were telling me that they were bombing him out after, and Man City didn't want him, and and they so and so didn't want him. And I thought, well, he, he looks a bit of a rogue. He, he, he fitting well with us, really. We've got a bunch <laughs> of them in here. So um, you know, uh, that's when I, I, I went, decided to go and get Brownie as well. But it was nice to get the win out of the way against Portsmouth. Can I test your knowledge now and see whether you can remember what that starting eleven was that Not day? A would, would you be able to guess two or three? I can tell you the faces. I can't tell you names at minute. I'm just trying to think. Um, Goalkeeper. Uh, well, that was Trace. Yeah, Trace. Simon Tracy. Uh, I think yeah. Benty played up front. He I did. Think, he uh, did with Devlin. Yeah. Um, Devlin one side. I can never remember the lad's name. He was a, he was a manager's dream in midfield. A, a little lad. He worked his socks off. Um, and Bobby blonde. Ford. That's him, Bobby Ford. Manager's dream. Uh, didn't get a lot of plaudits from the fans or anything, but he was always on your team sheet yeah. as a manager. You knew you were going to get eight out of ten out of him every game. So it was good that. I'm not sure, was the uh, was Murphy at the back? Yes, he was. He uh, was. Lee Sanford? Correct. Um, full backs. Wayne Quinn on one Wayne side. Quinn. Wow, Wayne Quinn. And the other one would have been, it's a difficult one, David Giesbrecht's. I would never have got that. <laughs> yeah, Bruno Ribeiro in midfield as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he, he had some skill, did Bruno? He did, yeah. Quinny, fella, wasn't he? Quinny was ever so funny. Quinny, we had a great left foot. Quinny. Yeah. When we went to Cornwall pre-season with Quinny, he comes from he comes from Helston, just down the road, you mm. know, down Cornwall, and we played played a game down there. I said, "Come on, Quinny, we'll we'll go to your territory." Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. So we go down and I, I found out from the driver, I said, find out what is local. So we went past it on the way and I said, is that pub, do you use that? He said, yeah, that's, that's my local. I already knew it like. <laughs> so of course we goes after, after the game and what have you. And um, so we all get on the bus and, and I said, the driver knew what we were going to do. We, we went to the local and I said, Quinny, we're all going in here now. Are you going to? You're not, are you? He couldn't believe it, Quinny. So all the Sheffield United team going in the local pub. And, uh, but he, he was a good lad. Curtis Woodhouse was around as well yeah. at, the, at that yeah. time. He was, a, he was a, a, not a likeable rogue. Oh, that, that might be a nice way of putting it, really. But he always gave his all for me. He, he, they always put a shift in, the lads. So I, I had a good group, but they were really short of confidence when, when, I, when I came in. Mm. Coslock you had as well. Um, was, was he a nightmare for you? Did he cause you problems? We all know what kind of a joker he is in, in that regard. Did he, did he push any boundaries or was he useful actually? For I, never had, I never had one problem with Cosy. Cosy was an absolute manager's dream <laughs> because you need a bit of humour around. And in fairness to Cosy, he knew when, he, when to keep quiet. He yeah. knew when to shut up. When I was serious, he would never interfere with that. But there were other times where we needed that. You know, we needed the Mickey taking and that, and it, it built it all together. Especially when I signed Morgan from uh, I signed Morgs from Barnsley. I went. I, it took me about two months to get Morgs. I got fed up of ringing him up, really pestering him, <laughs> and. Uh, talking to his missus. I talked to his missus about 10 times, trying to get her to be a family person and all that lot. I thought, I'll do anything to get him signed. And we were desperate for Morgs. And, um, and uh, Cosy was, he, could, he played anywhere for me, left back, right back, he'd do anything. Uh, he, he wasn't the, the funniest article, but he weren't bad. Mm. He weren't bad, he was a decent defender was Cosy. So, I, you know, we all 
everybody used to accept him for what he was. And like I say, he never went, he never stepped out. He did one or two outrageous things while we were there, which I remember him uh, uh, stripping off and doing a circuit went on a cricket ground down in Cornwall pre-season. But, you know, um, uh, that, you know, one or two of my uh, neighbours weren't, <laughs> We're very happy. weren't impressed. But uh, no, he, 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 was, he was good for the squad, was Cos. When, when you came here, did you... Did you have a, an idea in your head as to how you wanted your team to look? I presume you did, because this club has certain core values, doesn't it? And mm. one of the big ones is hard work, dedication, leave it all out there. I and mean, that's something you are renowned for. So when you came here, when you were recruiting players, did they have to have those characteristics most of the time? I think when I set my stall out at Sheffield and every other club, really, I want the fans to go home after a game excited. Yeah. I want him to talk about the shot that he saved or the goal that he scored or the tackle that he made. Um, you know, I want, I want him to, because when I went home on the bus with my dad, that's all they talked about, that game. And when we won, it was like unbelievable. It, the atmosphere on the bus and, and going home, it was, it was super. And I had a kit man, Derek, um, around. And my happiest time was when we had a good win. And I used to go in a slipper bath after the lads would go and have a warm down mm. and I, I used to go in a slipper bath and he'd bring me a cup of tea and I'd have a cup of tea in a slipper bath and I'd just close my eyes and I'd think about all the kids like Neil Warnock was when he was young, going home tonight, wow, what a goal, Dad, what a tackle, what a this, what a that, what a referee decision, you know, so it was, it, it was I always, I've always tried to get fans to enjoy my football. I mean, I used to get slaughtered for being long ball, and sometimes I still do by certain managers, which I think is wrong. Yeah. Um, but I got that. I got that because at Notts County, I had a back four that couldn't pass water. So how can you play football when you can't pass a ball? So uh, you know, we had to play a different style then, and that that sort of got labelled with me. But I think at Sheffield we had some. When you look at the cup runs, etc., yeah. and then the way we played. Um, we had some great times and we had some great football matches as well. I mean, arguably the most memorable season is, is the one where you didn't win promotion, but you got to the two cup semi-finals, you got to the playoff final, and yeah. even now I get goosebumps thinking about that season. The cup nights here, the last minute goals, I know. Jaggy, the noise, Jaggy Elka yeah. against Leeds, just... I mean, it was, it, it, was, it, was, it, it just got it all buzzing. Like you said, yeah. when I, before I took over 8,000 crowd and everybody going home miserable. And I, 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 made, I made out my stall to be, to try and, like as a, I was a kid really. And, and that, the, the, the games when you talk about, there weren't many games that weren't exciting. Um, so it was, I mean that, that year, the, the, the two, I mean I've always been a bit unlucky, you know, I mean I have a go at referees, but I've been unlucky with referees. I can talk you through the two semi-finals, you know. I mean Graham Paul was a disgrace, how he couldn't get out of the way. Yeah. Um, and now it, it would have been a, a free kick now. Yeah, he would have yeah. blown and given us the ball yeah. back. I mean, Michael Tong passed the ball and it hit Graham Paul and went straight to their lad. Yeah. Down the wing, cross it, Lindbergh scores the winner. You know, and then he's coming off at half time laughing and joking with their players, Graham Paul. You know, I thought it were a disgrace that. And then the other semi final, Alan Wiley, who I dealt with in lately in the EFL, you know, Kirkland comes out, it's a handball outside the air, it should be a red card. We go, we, we'd have been through otherwise. And he books him, because it's at Anfield, isn't it? You know, all the big clubs get there. Get there. And when, you, when you come to my evening with us, you know, there'll be one or two stories about, uh, <laughs> about, uh, about Anfield and other places like that. Where, uh, you know, I remember at Sheffield and I, we, when we played um, at Old Trafford. And yeah. Luton, Shelton, about oh God, yeah. 75th minute, something like that. Through kid chopped him down. It's a red card and a penalty. And and Rob Styles, I can tell you, it is Rob Styles twice. Rob Styles here. What about Liverpool here? That's him. Opening day of the season. That was Gerard. him. Gerard. Well, that was him. Yeah. Rob Styles. So he don't give a he don't give anything, you know. And I, of course, I, Alex texts me in for a drink after, and I said, "What did you think about the Shelton thing?" I went, "Hack. He he don't get them at Old Trafford, son." You know, and down here when he comes out after the game with Gerard, because Morg didn't catch, uh, they didn't catch him. Mm. He just stumbled, yeah. and uh, he said, "I gave the penalty for intent." 
I mean, I think <laughs> Keith Ackett come out, who then was in charge, mm. and said, I'm sorry, but there's no such thing as intent. He got it wrong, you know. But you can't change the decisions. No, no, so no. technically, we could have won two semi finals. And then at, at Wembley, I know it sounds horrible because they won 3 0, didn't they? Cardiff's in Cardiff, wasn't it? Yeah. Millennium. They yeah. won 3 0, sorry, yeah, Cardiff. They won 3 0, but do you know, I'm still convinced to this day that if Brownie had scored his penalty, mm. we would have been close. Because we used to, once we got our, 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 you know, our, our smell of the victory, we used to power teams. And we were just started the second half, the penalty miss. That, that killed us, but I think if we'd have got that, I think we could have gone on and got a result that yeah. day. I, I, I was convinced you were going to do it that day, purely because you never knew when you were beat. You'd had all those dramatic late yeah. wins, the team spirit was there. Yeah. So it was, it was a real big disappointment, yeah, the, the Millennium one, which obviously it would have been for you as well. Uh, it was, because it was, I, I never lost at Wembley. Yeah. I was gutted it was yeah. at the Millennium, <laughs> if I'm honest. But that's how it is, I was a bit unlucky there. Yeah, I mean, so many great, great times though, and obviously the Forest game here, I think arguably to this day, that's the best game I have ever witnessed. Yeah, and life. me, and um, me, when I'm asked about it, and it's, it seemed... Because in terms of roller coaster ride, yeah. that was it. 2-0 down half-time, I was over there in the gantry, commentating for Radio Sheffield and obviously Radio Nottingham had their own commentary team there as well. So 2-0 at half time to them, they're up and down celebrating, we're, we're going to the final, we're going to the final. Oh, well, this is where the journey ends for us. Then suddenly, all that well, I, I, wow. I, I mean, you've got that with, yeah. you, with your memory. <coughs> I've got all their staff celebrating. That's yeah. in my memory. I'm stood there and out of the corner of my eye when the 2-0 up, you know, they're all celebrating them lot. And... Um, I remember saying to John, Mick Jones, who sadly passed away yeah. now, um, I remember saying to Mick Jones, whatever happens, whatever result, they're going to know they've been in a game next second half when we get hold of them at half time. And, um, and I said to the lads, look lads, I know it's, it's a big ask, but we've got to win every 60, 40, 40, 60, whatever you say, every header, we've got to win everything this half. We've got to give it the best shot. If we can get the next goal, you know, it'll just put the fear of God into them and, uh, and what have you. And every one of them players, they weren't, you could hear a pin drop in the dressing room. I can see it now. And every, every pair of eyes was focused on me. There weren't anybody, you know, sometimes in the dressing room, you get a lad who's, who's looking down yeah. at the floor, or what, not these. Everyone were looking at me around the dressing room like that. And I says, lads, we're going to sort it out this half. Everybody together. Got gooses again here talking. So, um, and we went out. I mean, all right, I can't tell you the number. 2-1, you know, they sat down the staff then. They weren't stood up then, their staff. Two each, they went back into the dugout at two each. Um, and then how did the scoring go then? Uh, Pesky scored the... Third. He it scored... His own goal, the fourth one. That's right, it? it was Des Walker. Yeah. So uh, when Pesky... I mean, his celebration... Oh, Pesky, it's iconic, isn't it? I, I loved his celebration, <laughs> yeah. His only celebration that... Well, it should have happened. It was at Old Trafford when Seaman made that blinking oh. save. He should have buried it, Pesky. And he might, I know it's a great save. What about Jagielka as well on the follow-up? Should he? Should yeah. he score? Yeah, yeah, of course he should have. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was, it was a fabulous celebration. And then, and then we had the own goal. Then they score, and then it were, it were nerve-wracking yeah. again for two or three minutes. But I remember coming out 45 minutes later, something like that, might have been an hour later. I won't tell you who it was, because it's not fair. But the, the chap who was celebrating and, and looking when I'm um, that dugout, he was sat on the steps like that, and just, stood, just sat still with his head in his hands. And I thought to myself, yeah, don't celebrate too soon, pal. And uh, yeah, that was that was a great. I mean, the atmosphere, the place was absolutely buzzing, wasn't it that night? Yeah, was, I've, so. I've never heard anything like it. It was it was amazing. Best game you've had in charge that? Yeah. Oh, in, in any any league, in any. You know, I'm asked at uh, all the promotions I've had about the games, but nothing was quite as exciting as that. Not being written off like that and then coming back like that in a, in a situation. You know, I mean, all the playoff games had good memories. Mm. All the finals are amazing. You know, when you can take a team to Wembley and come away with a victory and promotion um, and all the journey home, what it entails, you know. But I still think getting automatics the best for your health. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, Sheffield United, I remember that as if it was yesterday. We were in Cornwall 
I went home. We played Friday, Good Friday at Cardiff. Uh, was it Cardiff? Yeah, I think it, yeah, it was. was Danny Webber. Danny Webber. Yeah. And uh, and Leeds had to win the next day. I couldn't. I couldn't watch the telly. I was on on, on my tractor. I don't know what I was doing. I wasn't doing anything because <laughs> everybody says I've got a bloody farm, but I am. I've only got two fields. Uh, but I was on my old tractor. I've got a 1950 odd at Massey Ferguson, and uh, I went and just. I drove around a little bit and I was in a, a little bit of a haze. I didn't, you know, I knew they were going to tell me, mm. but I didn't, I didn't want, I couldn't watch it because I, I would have been too sick really. And then uh, I remember Sharon and the kids running towards me, oh, crying down here. But, um, you know, they're oh, waving and I'm driving up there and, and, um, and I comes off and they, they all, you know, all, all, we all grabbed hold of each other. It, it was, very emotional, um, and then, because when I calmed down, I said to her, um, "Oh, love, I've got to take you for a meal tonight, love. Let's ring the restaurant." I rang about ten restaurants, couldn't get a meal Saturday night, and uh, we ended up uh, uh, me and Willow. We went to uh, a takeaway, uh, a kebab takeaway in Callington, and I'm remembered at the bar saying to the guy who was giving us these kebabs, hey, but you don't get many Premier League managers getting a kebab when they've got promotion. <laughs> the guy, guy must have thought I was going a bit lunar. But uh, yeah, I said, uh, Premier League manager buying a kebab. But it, it was so emotional. Like, even now, I just felt mm -hmm. it then. And because uh, I can see, I can see her running across the field. And you know, it was, it was, uh, it was wonderful, really. Um, to, to have done all that, you know, and then to got your, your boyhood team back in, you know, to the big time, it was, it was good. I know, it, I know, it was here, uh, you know, seven years somewhere, but, but we were always, it always had exciting periods in that time. I never thought anything about my time's up or anything like that. Are you with me? Mm. Um, I just thought we could get better each year, and, and excite more. And, and I thought, I think the. The, the, the fans had the share of excitement when I was here. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And, and going into the Premier League and being a Premier League manager with your boyhood club, how, how was that? How did your life change as a consequence of that? Um, well, obviously, you, you, you're, um, you've got a lot more commitment with the, with the press mm. and, and the TV companies and things like that. So there were a lot more work to do like that. But I've always been good at delegating. I think a good manager, you've got to delegate. I had good staff. You know, I, I, um, Mick Jones, who we've talked about now, was amazing, a lovely man. And he was great for me because, whereas I'm a bit, I'm a bit, you know, uh, with the referees and all that, like, he's such a calming influence, or was a, such a calming influence, Mick. And, um, and, and he'd always tell me as it, how it was, you know. Blackie, the same who I've worked yeah. with, you know, he, the, 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 the weren't yes men. That if, if they thought it was wrong or they thought my selection, they'd tell me and let me have a think. Mm. See, and a number of times I've changed my mind after what they said, which is what you want your staff to do, really. But here, I felt, I know it sounds silly, but when I turned up at the club, I thought everybody was fraction. I thought the ticket office was over there. I thought the commercial side was over there. I thought there were no, no, no togetherness. There were no harmony. And I made it my job, I thought I made it my job to bring everybody together. And, you know, I used to go in the ticket office and, and, you know, sell the tickets at times to some players. Are you with me? The club shop. I used to go, you know, um, and we, with John Garrett and, and we used to, you know, do things around, you know, like, the, you know, the museum yeah, thing. Like. Yeah. So we, we built it all. And I, I used to think we, we got it all back together as it was, because it's always been a fabulous, friendly club. And, uh, and, and, and I'd like to think that we played as part in that, because it, it just seemed to all come together again and when you've got a harmony like that you know I think it's I used to come in drive into the car park when they were queuing for tickets for the cup mm. and Mick Jones used to say should we go around should we go around the side and come in gaffer says Mick come on come with me we used to walk down and we used to go talking to queues you know talking to kids and signing autographs <laughs> I mean you know what I mean just walking into the stadium and they, th they saw wow the managers are with us in the queue are you with me yeah. for the cup ticket because it, it was so exciting to and you've been there you, yeah. you've been where they're stood I've been in the queue yeah. yeah and it was so exciting to see queues in the car park waiting to get the cup tickets and that it was it was it was really good and like I said I think we just we just got it all together again and managing in the Premier League, going up against some of the elite, how did you find that? Um, I never, I never worried too much. I mean, 
I've been in the Premier League a few times, and and I'm not, you know, I'm not pulled any trees up in that respect. But every time I've been in, I think we could have stayed up. Mm. Um, I've never really had any investment, um, and I don't think they'll mind me saying I don't think we got much investment here, if I'm honest. Um, and I don't think we got investment in any of the clubs I've been at. You know, uh, QPR couldn't sign a player till the end of August <laughs> after when we went up. At QPR, are you with me? At Cardiff, it was difficult. So it was here. I think we, 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 I don't know how much we spent, but we didn't spend much at all, really. So I had to go with the players and, believe, you know, give them as best I could try and do. And, and we weren't far away. We weren't, we weren't far away. So it was, you know, I mean, I, we got 38 points. Yeah. Not many clubs nowadays. They, I mean, the, if you look at the Premier League today, they'll snap your hand off for 38 oh, points. Yeah. And I think at Christmas time, I think you're about ten points clear. If yeah, memory serves. I think me. when we beat West Ham here, we yeah. were we were ten points yeah. clear. And obviously, Rob Hulse, the injury was uh, a disappointment at Chelsea. A massive blow at Chelsea, that wasn't it? I think that rocked a lot of people. And that's something. An injury like that has to rock the squad. Well, you've got to have goals to, to stay up, really. And, and Rob was a, a big. Even if he didn't score it, his assist rack. You know, he, yeah. he was a big player in our team, really. So. Even though I was distraught in that respect, I couldn't show it to the press or to the lads. Mm -hmm. I had to keep a big face up, and you know, we'll we'll be all right. We'll you know, we'll get on with it. But it was a major blow that, um, and obviously, I still, like I say, I still felt we were dealt a raw deal. If I'm honest, with the way we got relegated, yeah. I don't think it should have happened. It wouldn't happen now. No, uh, but you know, by uh, I look at um, at the rules and regulations now, and you know, if the boot would have been on the other foot and West Ham would have gone down. I'm telling you now, they would have done Sheffield United for points, without a shadow of a doubt. But a little Sheffield United to just, you know, fob them off. Mm. And um, the way that, you know, I mean, you know how bitter I've felt regarding, yeah. uh, regarding Benitez at Liverpool playing a third team at Fulham, and Sir Alex playing a, a reserve team the last game. I felt, I felt we deserved more than that Sheffield United, but that's, that's how it is. How much did that disappoint you? Because I would assume that Sir Alex is someone that you'd always looked at as, you know, quite rightly so, as being one of the best of the best. And then that happens. Does that then sour your relationship with him? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Did you ever talk to him about? He rang me up the next day, but you'll have to come to my shows, Paul. <laughs> I've got to come to your shows. I'm flipping hosting it. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be going into detail okay. in, them, in them shows on that. Okay. Uh, the, Wigan, the Wigan game, if we can look back at that, you spoke about the Forest game as being the absolute high point. That must have been the absolute low. Yeah, I remember. I think that's probably, probably the worst time I can remember in my career that I was stood on the touchline it was raining yeah I got r rain coming down my face onto my nose uh, we were 10 minutes to go Danny Weber had just hit the post and I was thinking all by it was I know it sounds strange but I didn't hear the crowd I was just stood on the touchline oblivious to the crowd and I was thinking back you know we don't deserve this we, de we deserve people to be a little bit more honest. Um, we've been honest as hell. The lads are so genuine. Look at them all. And I looked at the lads, you know, they were all giving their all. Um, and I felt we'd been let down by other things and that, you know, uh, cruel game at times, football. But that, that was probably the worst two minutes, um, you know, stood looking around and thinking. Then I was back into it and the crowd. But I just had a, like a period of a couple of minutes where I, I was oblivious to the crowd. When you were stood there, though, do you start thinking, this is it, this is probably going to be the end for me, I need to call it a day? Because it wasn't long after, was it, until Not you decided really. it was, uh, it there was were, time? Well, there were, there were one or two personal things which I was disappointed oh. in with, with, uh, with, with Kevin at the time, and I, mm. I, felt, I felt really strongly about that. So um, I was disappointed when we got promotion, if I'm honest, when we, when we got promotion um, because I, I, in my contract, um, they said we haven't put anything in for promotion. So I said, no, don't worry about that. If we get promotion, I, you know, I've known Kevin for many years. I know I'll be, I'm, you know, be right as rain. I'll, uh, I'll get a new contract. It'll be a right contract, you know. Whereas the day after we got promotion, I got a letter through the post saying I was going to be on the same contract, um, but incentivized 
if, you know, I think if we were in the top four in the Premier League, I'd got a hell of a wage, you know. But um, it, it didn't make sense to me like that. And I remember Sharon reading the letter and crying her eyes out. And I said, listen, darling, it's what it is. Mm. Uh, let's give it a go. Um, you know, we've earned a right to give it a go. But I could never forget that, really. Yeah. Never forget that. After so. such a, a long time at one club and so many highs and few lows to boot, did your appetite for football management suffer as a, as a result of Yeah, I wanted, here? my intentions from many years before I took Sheffield was to pack in. Right. I thought at 55, but then I thought, right, I think if, if I can get um, Sheffield United in the Premier League and sustain them in the Premier League and call it a day on a high, are you with me? Yeah. So to leave like I did, it was very bitter in my mind. I was very, very bitter about, I thought I deserved better than what I got. Um, from behind the scenes and um, um, I left and didn't really I was a bit in a bit of a haze for for a few weeks really and it was just a call out of the blue from um, from Simon Jordan really who um, you know what you're moping around at you know would you do me a favor I'd never mentioned managing just come and have a look at my club and see what you think from the outside and all that lot and um, and, I, and, and Sharon said, yeah, go on, because we, lo we, we love Sharon, Simon Jordan. We thought he was fabulous. And um, I said, go on then. So I went to meet him and um, I just spent a couple of days down there. And, uh, you know, within a week he was saying, please, please take over, you know, and, uh, and we did. We, I, I mean, I, I never thought I'd ever want to manage in London. I thought below Watford was the pits. Yeah. So to get Palace and like QPR later on, um, you know, but as it turned out, they were wonderful experiences, fabulous clubs, uh, lovely people. Everything I thought wasn't there was there. Yeah. But from a young lad in short trousers at Sheffield, London, you know, and he went to London once on the, on a club outing. Um, it was a massive place, but um, it, they were my kind of clubs. Crystal Palace was like Sheffield United. Uh, QPR was like Sheffield United. They were all fan-based. Mm. The fans loved the clubs. They were on top of the, uh, the, the referees and things. Are you with me? Uh, they wanted genuine people. And uh, so, yeah, I got the love back at uh, Palace. And I'm glad I did, really, because from Palace, I, I really then had a, had a lovely time in, in management and got some more promotions. and. Uh, ended up managing lovely clubs. I mean, not just promotions, but, you know, once again, I mean, I called it a day before and, and you know the story about Sharon, uh, I think I've told you that about her. Um, kicking you out. Kicking me out, yeah. <laughs> and, but ended up at Rotherham, which I didn't think, you know, and I loved it at Rotherham. I mean, I don't know how many games I had, something about 14, 15 games at Rotherham. We lost the first couple, I think, and drew one. Um, and then went on an amazing 11 game run. And, but the, once again, I got a basic group of boys, or men, um, six points adrift, I think we were, somewhere like that, but they believed in what I was saying, and they absolutely died for me. And what we lacked in, in ability, well, boy, did we make up for in that, you know. And we talk about games in Nottingham Forest. Let me tell you, there was one game at uh, Milmore, which was Derby County. We were in the dugout. I can see the young, uh, young Vassell was in charge mm. uh, and Craig Short was his right hand man then. So they're winning 1-0 and then 2-0 and then the manager stands up and waves to the crowd 2-0 and then 3-0 he's blowing kisses to the crowd at 3-0 and they're in, you know. And then in the 80 something minute we scored a goal and uh, there's no waving to anybody, they just stand still. And then, then the 89th minute, it might even have been the 90th minute, we scored a second goal. And they then sat back down in the dugout, these lads. And then the 94th minute, Bestie scores a header for 3-3. Three, three. And, uh, and you can't see anybody there. I think they chanted for his head then by that time. But th that was 3-3. Three, three. And then we missed a chance at the, at the death to go 4-3. I mean, that was unbelievable. Because I ribbed Tony Stewart, the chairman, yeah. still ribbed him to this day, because he went at 3-0. He had to go to a wedding that night. So he went and missed all the goals, all the excitement. 
So that, that was special that day. That was a wonderful, a wonderful, what you could do in 10 minutes. But they were genuine lads and they went through a brick wall for me and it was great. To keep them up was as big an achievement as, as any of the others mm. really in that, in that day. A lovely club. Is it definitely it now then? Yeah, well, I, I've, I've said that. You can confidently say that's it. I have said it about five times. I know you times. have, so I'm, I'm probably not going to believe you, whatever you say. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't. I don't think I even believe myself. I just don't. You, you just never say never about anything, do you, really? Mm. I was offered a job two weeks ago, you know. Um, so, you know, you never say never. But I, I can't see me doing it. I'm enjoying doing my evening with. I'm really looking Don't worry, for... we're going to talk about that in a minute. Oh yeah, but, I'm enjoying but... doing them. But that's given me something to do. Because mm. when you've been in the game, I can't tell you how many, you're 1980, probably, um, you know, 40 odd years, 42 years as a manager. Yeah. When, you, when you've been in the game that long, you've got to have something you know, I mean, I am useless at home, Paul, in anything I do. She says, you are used. I said, I know I am, love. The only thing I was good at was football management. I haven't got that now. So I'm really got, I'm struggling at the minute. But so it's one of them things that um, you've got to find something to get that adrenaline. You've got to find something that you've got, you get your teeth in. Are you with me? Yeah. I'm enjoying William. Uh, and Amy, I'm enjoying William's golf. He's playing really well at golf, and uh, hopefully going to teach. On, you know, How old is William now? I remember he's when 21. I remember he was yay big. Yeah. You took me. Well, not you, but I went down with Sharon to the game at Highbury in the FA Cup. Yeah, yeah. See, things pop back, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and William and Amy were in the back of the car, and they were just toddlers back then. Yeah. So William's 21 One. now, and, and she's old? 23. Goodness me. And she was mascot at uh, Old Trafford. Wow. For the, uh, for the game, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little snippet, all Go right? Go on then. All right. Um, at, at Wembley, uh, sorry, at Old Trafford when she was mascot. Yeah. Um, we, played, uh, we played Arsenal, didn't we? And we played well, didn't we, that yeah. day? We were yeah. the best side that day, which made it worse with the way we went out with Graham Paul and that. Um, but she was mascot, and because she comes home and, and the, she went to school, and the, the teacher was talking to her. This was some come back from the teacher, by the way. And she said, what, what, you know, can you, you know, the day was a wonderful day. There were 70,000 or something, I don't know how many there was. And all this, and she said, Amy, what, what do you, re you know, what, what do you remember about the day to Amy? And Amy went, I, I lost my hair bubble <laughs> on the pitch. <laughs> The innocence of kids, eh? The innocence of kids, yeah. yeah I lost brilliant. my hair bubble on the pitch. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, uh, but it was good. You know, it, it was, um, it was, it was special. The kids were being brilliant, really. Uh, I mean, William's been all, all over the show with mm. us as well. So it was, you know, they grew up in uh, uh, at Sheffield. We had, a, we had a lovely time when we lived here. You know, chat, we've got some lovely areas, haven't we? Yeah. You know, we used to love going out to Chatsworth uh, around that area and Bamford and all there. And yet the same way, uh, I was brought, brought up at Freshville, I was born at Freshville, so we always went out Eckington way and, and out that way, there's some yeah. nice places there, yeah, you know, right. so it's a, I think it's, a, it's just a nice area, I think, you, you know, you think about Sheffield Steel and all that and smoke and smog and... It's not that though, is no, it? No, it's beautiful, yeah. beautiful parts. Do you know what I think is great about you, Neil, I often think this, is that how you've been able to outlast younger managers, you know, I, I do feel and I think a fair few people feel that Football is overcomplicated sometimes. It, it's, it's, it's too, uh, I don't know what the word is, too sterile, too forensic. But you've outlasted young up and coming managers who've got all these newfangled ideas, yet you've had your principles from day one. You, you're big on heart, you're big on passion, you're big on hard work, hard work. Does that prove then that football actually just comes down to a bit of that rather than all yeah. these other? Things I think that all the now things come into the game. All, all the things that you talk about that I, that I demand from my players, it should be basics. Really, yeah. like, that should be the minimum that they give in any club. Mm. I, I just think that I have some good managers um, over my career, and I think you've got to look at. I always looked at what good I took from each manager. They were yeah. always good. There were a lot of bad in a lot of them, mm. but I tried to get what I liked about that manager, and and put it into me and. I want my players, um, I mean it's only recently, you know, um, uh, when, when I left Paddy um, at Middlesbrough, like Paddy McNair, I spoke to Paddy and Paddy said, I've, I've got to say, I've never looked forward to training as much since, since, you know, when you came to the club, I've loved it, you know, that type of thing. And that's what I want, I want players to get up in the morning, want to come training, want to enjoy it. I don't want them there all day, 
yeah. don't want to bamboozle them with science. Uh, I want them to come and train. Yes, we've got a structure because we want to win the game. So we, 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 you know, people think it's all off the cuff. Your dinosaurs don't, you know, don't do things like this. But we were very thorough. We had good staff on on the um, looking at opponents, etc. Mm -hmm. But we had a, we had a way that we wanted them to express themselves. Um, and whether I was, I'm 73 now, and whether a manager at 29 when I started, I've still got the same principles as I had at 29. And to be successful doesn't change at all. To be successful, you've got to be the best man manager you can. Man management is 90% of being a successful football manager. Yeah. All these degrees and diplomas and all these people writing you know, they've got the sketch pads on the touchline, haven't they? You know, I always said to the fourth official when they've got these things, what's he doing? He's writing shopping list down, I what for tomorrow? <laughs> you know, um, I, I, that's how I, I see management. I, I, have a, I want to play attractive, I want people to enjoy the teams, I want us to have oohs and ahs and things like that, are you with me? Mm. I don't see, I watched a goal a couple of weeks ago, uh, into the, uh, before the end of last season, and the goalie took a goal kick, which is fashionable now. Yeah. And they had 15 passes to the halfway line. They lost it on the halfway line and the other team scored. Went through and scored. I don't see that. Now, if people want that, great. Appoint that manager. But I don't see that. I'd like to have passes from the halfway line in their half yeah. and get crosses in or shots in or see a goalie save. That's how I call football. Oh, all this. Yeah, I know you've got to have more possession, etc. I accept that. But some people do it for the sake yeah. of it now. And that's you know, supposed to be fashionable. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see that. I think man management, getting the best out of players will always be like that. And the players will have, you know, you'll, you'll have a, if you ever ask any of my players, even up to last year, They'll know about, if you talk about my pre-season, all of my play, ex-players will say the hurdles, <laughs> right? Now, I've done that since I first started. <laughs> I did it at Hartlepool with Len Ashers when Tony Toms came in. Yeah. Never seen him before. And we did these hurdles over and then under and over to break your run up. To so that you had to get your mind thinking while you're running really, for, you know, strong. So I've always done that. And then I've had, uh, I've had fitness guys tell me regularly in pre-season, uh, Gaffer, I think they've done enough now, and I'll say, well, I'll tell you when they've done enough, all right? I'm the manager. You, you tell me what you think, and then shut up. You know, I've always had my way, and I always said, Mick Jones and Blackie have always said to them, don't tell him, don't tell him in pre-season. Uh, because you don't lose that. You've got a feeling of what you know. I know when somebody can give a bit more, mm. you know. And a number of times I've, I've done something else. When, a, a chap, when a, one of the fitness guys told me that, and, and I've said, to him, I pulled him to me and I said, look, I'm going to do one more now. I know you said done enough. And I'm telling you now, I am going to get them to beat the best time they've ever done. Now, are you? And he goes, all right, how are you going to do it? I said, well, you listen. So I've said to Mick Jones, they're only going to do one more. But then I get the lads together and I say, right, lads, uh, you've done 63 seconds. I've got all the different times. Yeah. So I said, you've, got, you've done it in so-and-so. I've got all the times, so I know, because they're all different. So the centre half's probably 68, mm -hmm. some of the young and 62, are you with me? So I knock five seconds off each one. And I say, if you do that in that time, you're finished. If you don't, you do another one. All right, you do two. It's up to you what you do. But if you do it in that five seconds, every one of them would do beat that five seconds. And I know they've got that bit left, are you with me? Mm. And then when they finish and they break the record, I look at the fitness guy and just give him a wink. <laughs> you know? A couple of bits and pieces before we finish, and we'll talk about the shows in a second as well, but the, the documentary was just fabulous, absolutely brilliant. That, that churned up so many gems. I started this show by quoting one of your lines, you got to die for three points. The row with Morgan is just legendary. The, that's for Muscat, that coming off the pitch. Do you, how often do you get reminded of that kind of stuff? Because it's because uh, you're a social media star now. <laughs> yeah. Because it started it started it all over again, hasn't it? It's, it's all started over. reappearing again. Well, I went to St Andrews, couple which you can't do when you're in work. No. But I went to St Andrews. I was invited to the Saturday, uh, the Open, a couple of weeks ago, and I was on the balcony just above the 16th green, you know, 16th fairway sort of thing, and all the public had to come past there to go past you, and. Uh, 
because we were having a drink on the balcony and then you get a group of lads come in two minutes later another group and they'd look up and see him in and every you've got to have him die for three <laughs> points Neil you know uh, and it's it's uh, I think it's just it's just I did that I did that um, fly on the wall but what I said to the guy that were doing it I said listen I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'll do it right and at the end of the season if I don't want you to put some at in, I want you to cut it out. Mm -hmm. I said, but I'm going to have a microphone on all the time, but I'm going to forget about the microphone. I'm going to be myself and I'm going to trust you to do it as it is. But if there's anything I don't want you to put in, I want you to take it out. But if it's, you know, if I think it's all right or if, if we talk about it, I'll mm. agree to it. And that's how I did it. I didn't do it. You know, like I see some fly on the walls and you know they're playing to the camera. Yeah. I didn't do that. I had it and I, and I, and I forgot all about the, the camera. I put it in my mind, forget about that, just do it. Are you with me? So some of those scenes that you see, you know, they were like spontaneous sort of things. Are you with me? Which are the best ones, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Because you see some fly on the wall and you're, you're quite embarrassed, aren't you, for the managers yeah. that are involved in them. It's, um, you know, you've got to do it like that. You can't, do, I don't think you can do one where you know and you can plan. Mm. I think it's got to be like that. I couldn't do another one like that, you know, like that. It was a, that was a one-off thing, that, really. Poor old Danny Cadamatra, I didn't I feel for him. Poor lad, he was ill and you sent him into the showers on his own. They were, uh, get in that shower, you know, <laughs> make me feel sick. Oh, I love it. But I, only because he looks sick, you know, he made me feel sick. I didn't mean he made me feel sick as a personal. So it's, uh, you know. Right, a few things then. Um, we might have touched on some of these already, but who is the best player that you've managed here during your time at Bramall Lane? There's been a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I can. I, I never had a, uh, like a Tarab that I had at QPR. Yeah. Are you with me? Skillful wise here. I had some good players here, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put one above everybody else. Mm. Are you with me? Because I like your Bobby Ford as much as I liked your strikers. Are you with me? Yeah. Or as I like the fullbacks or the centre halves. I had, I had. Um, team players here. I think Brownie was fantastic for me. Yeah. Some of the goals he scored, the one against Sheffield Wednesday down here. Would that be the best goal? Because that was going to be the next question. I think so. Yeah, it's got to be on it. I love that, yeah. 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 I love that. I can see it now. I can. I mean, I can, you talk about me being a Sheffield United and Sheffield United fan and my sister Wednesday. But when Brownie's goal, I looked round the stadium. It was unbelievable. The noise, the euphoria. I mean, you can't put a price on that. No. That was that was like to to die for, really. So everybody thought he was your favourite. I think Jagielka certainly felt absolutely he was your favourite. Or, or but he, Brown thinks it's the other way that Jags I, was your favourite. He does, but you know, like with Brownie, I used to. If it was raining, I'd have had a brolly me. You know, I wouldn't worry about being called. You know, the trolley. What is it with the Wally with the brolly? Wally with the brolly. <laughs> So I'd have a brolly up and I'd, and I'd say to Brown, Brown, come under here, I mean, don't you get wet, son, <laughs> while I'm talking to all the others, are you with me? So wherever I went, I had a favourite. Dick yeah. Steele at, at Middlesbrough, yeah. put old Dick Steele, he was my favourite there. And, and I got them at every club, really. So, you know, I looked, and you know, can you imagine Cosy getting wet through and I've got Brownie <laughs> under the, under the brolly. So, you know, you, 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 that's how you are. You have certain thing, traits as a manager. I always had a so-called favourite. Do you know what I mean? But I used that. It was uh, it was good that I, I didn't. I mean, I, I, I pride myself with Montgomery, Tom, oh, Jaggy Elka. Yeah. I mean, to get them established like they were, yeah. and to see them progress and go and play, you know. And uh, Monty coaching now in Australia. Yeah, Tom keep in is, touch with him. Tom is at Huddersfield. Yeah, and uh, and and then Jag is just just hanging up his boots yeah. almost at 40. Still on Stokes, he was on the bench on Saturday yeah, when I went. Yeah. So the three lads coming from the academy was, I thought was fabulous, because that's what the academy's for. Mm. And we always had a good academy at Sheffield. So I, I, was, I was really pleased to have, have brought them through. But all the way around, you know, the players that we brought in and what have you, um, it, it was, I, wouldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't pick a favorite. And you're gonna do these shows now? Tell us a bit more about that. I know, obviously, but tell people who don't know about these shows that you're going to be doing. Obviously, you're coming. Well, to I Sheffield wanted to I, when when it was suggested to me um, about these. I thought I've got so many stories. I mean, I'm talking about when I when I first started at at Gainsborough Trinity. Are you with me? Even Sunday League at Todwick yeah. or Toddick, as Toddick, the locals yes. call it. 
um, stories from them days, you know, and then going to Notts County and opposite to Cluffy and a couple of afternoons with him, a couple of great stories about him and, and so forth. So when I started thinking about it, I thought, well, I've never really spoke about my career or my life in general. Mm. And people don't just want to go to the theatre to to look at a musical or a show, etc. I think it's a fascinating life that I've had. And I think there's some great stories. And I think there's humour that's going to make people laugh. And I think that's what you want in a... I think it's got the whole thing, and, and he's done professional. I mean, wow, he's done... Well, I'm on it, so you're all right. Well, apart from you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 all the videos and stuff, I mean... I, yeah, it's going to be good. Obviously, I didn't know, but I mean, he's so professional. And I'm actually enjoying the Twitter thing. I mean, I never thought, me on Twitter. I mean, Amy, my Amy kills me with that, you know. Oh, Dad, you, you know. But I actually enjoy... Uh, I, yeah, they suggest certain things. If I don't agree to it, I don't, you know. But yeah. what we put on, try and be funny. Try and make people laugh. Mm. That's what the life's all about now, isn't it, really? And I know I've got, you know, you, you've got your Mr. Marmite and all that. Do you like him or don't you like him? But I think, I think all, all the clubs I've been at, I've left them in a better place, really. Um, and, and, and that's how I see it. I want to talk about... Uh, I want to talk about Ferguson and Benitez, are you with me? And, and Wenger, who Wenger was instrumental in changing the whole concept of football mm. in England. So I want to talk about these managers, but at the same time I want to talk about the FA Cup at Burton Albion, are you with me? And yeah. stories behind the scene where, you know, we've got six players at half past six one night and, you know, we put a team sheet in and we, when we were part-time, you know, at Scarborough. So there's funny stories to come out, and uh, I think it'll be an in, a really enjoyable evening, me. And, and I'm right looking forward to it. And, and you know, Steve was, was looking after me. He, he, he we picked these, you know, we've got Sheffield, um, Cardiff, Sheffield, Huddersfield, are you with me? Mm. And then Middlesbrough, Scarborough, um, Plymouth. So I said, let's see how they go, because they're good ones. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> uh, then I want to do one or two bad ones then. Leeds. I want to go, I want to, go to Ips Ipswich and, uh, and Portsmouth or somewhere like that. <laughs> when I, in places that I've always yeah. wanted to. You know, I've always had a good rapport with away fans at Ipswich and Portsmouth. Mm. So I wouldn't mind doing things like that, are you with me? But let's see how, let's see how they go first. I'm sure there'll be a roaring success. Tickets are available right now. Just search online. Uh, and Neil will be coming to the City Hall and he will be telling stories that you will not have heard before. Not just from his time here, but wherever he's been. It's going to be a joy. It really, really is. Neil, it's been a pleasure. And like always, when we speak to people like you, we, we could do hours and hours and hours, but we're not going to. I know you want to go home and get some sleep because we're recording on the day that Sheffield United play Sunderland. You're going to come back and watch the game Absolutely. tonight. Yeah. But it's been an absolute pleasure. Lovely to see you. Always is. Thanks very much indeed for your time. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, thank you to all the Sheffield United fans for putting up with me all them seven years. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Thanks again. Ladies and gents, Neil Warnock. We'll see you next time. Hope you've enjoyed it. Ta-da.